Hey everyone, Zella here. A while ago, Mr. TLX5, myself, and Dobby announced on Twitter that we will be fully remastering Diarize 1 to 1 for Black Ops 3 Zombies. Since then, we've released countless updates about the map and its development process. It's been a bit since we've posted an update for the map, but now we are back and ready to share more with you guys on what's to come and what's already been done. In this video, I'm going to be showing some before and after shots of Diarize, as well as show some new areas in the map to look forward to. My new Patreon additions and the new Discord server myself and Dobby made for Diarize and other projects, which you can find the link to in the description, the custom PAP names, custom PAP camos, and custom name tags, the mapping development explained for Diarize so far, and lastly, the weapon development for the remastered BO2 weapons. Starting off with the before and after shots, as you can see there has been a significant change into the map's overall tone and color contrast, as compared to the older version which gives off a more dull, desaturated, and washed out vibe. I'm trying my best to avoid the dull look of the BO2 version while still trying to keep it faithful to the old map in terms of context, and with the BO3 engine tools it's kinda hard to make a map that looks as dull as some of the BO2 maps do, so in actuality, it really isn't too difficult to make this map look more vibrant and crisp. As far as new areas go, I'll show off one area in the map I haven't shown yet, which is the good old PhD hallway you pass as you're crashing down the freight elevator shaft. In our version of Diarize, this area will be fully accessible and you guys will finally be able to buy the perk you pass so many times down that elevator shaft. You will also have two exits to choose from when you want to leave this area. You can either go through the janitor's closet here and jump off from the office area to the adjacent tower where power is, or you can go back on the freight elevator to go back to spawn. As to how you get the freight elevator working like this, I want to leave that up to you guys to figure out when the map comes out. For my Patreon page, I've added a new $3 tier for people that just want a glimpse of the behind the scenes stuff for Diarize and other projects, and as well as exclusive Patreon member access for the public Diarize Discord server. So with this, you'll be able to see the Patreon supporters chat and talk with other patrons and get exclusive behind the scenes media posts that you wouldn't see publicly on social media platforms. You'll also get your respective roles in the Discord server if you are a Patreon supporter. With this new Discord server, myself and Dobby wanted to bring you guys all together and hear your potential ideas and suggestions for the map and just have general conversation with you guys. So I highly recommend you join the Discord to stay up to date with the latest Diarize information. With our new Patreon pages, myself and Dobby were able to officially incorporate you guys into our maps, such as things like custom side easter eggs, getting your name anywhere in the map, and the most popular ones, custom pack-a-punch weapon names and camos. We've had some pretty uh, interesting pack-a-punch names suggested from you guys to say the least. <clears throat> Uh, anyways, it was so popular that you guys named all 56 weapons for Diarize in just over two weeks, if I recall correctly. And yes, there are actually 56 unique weapons in Diarize, which is a lot of fucking weapons for one map. So for Diarize, all the PAP weapon name slots have been filled. Now I know a lot of you already know that I'm working on Clinic of Hell alongside Diarize for Black Ops 3, and there are still many weapons yet to be named by you guys. So if you're interested, go and check out my Patreon page for more information on that. As some of you may know, I'm the one responsible for everything you see visually in the map itself. So the models, textures, lighting, skybox, and even layout changes that might be needed when remaking a map. Remaking this map has been a challenge to say the least. I've remade a lot of maps in the past, but this one definitely takes the cake for being the most difficult just due to the sheer amount of destruction and tipped off areas and even even fully upside down areas. I can't imagine how the devs felt making this in the BO2 days. Hats off to them for pulling it off back in the day, because I know I would have had a hard time with it. It's difficult enough remaking it, but I love a good challenge when it comes to mapping, so it has been very enjoyable to say the least. And I love seeing how I can turn something that's very old into something that's basically brand new with today's tech. With this map, due to its uniqueness, I've had to make a ton of assets from scratch. So to give an example of what I have to do when I need to make a new asset that doesn't currently exist in the 
models. For instance, these red metal beam trim textures I made to use in the map for the modular beam models I made in the upside down elevator shaft. I start out in my go-to 3D modeling software, Blender, to make the high poly mesh for the normal map of the texture. Then I use those details to bake them onto a flat geometrical plane in Substance Painter and add all the color, specularity, and final details in there. Then I have to set up the material in Ape, the software used to bring your assets into BO3. And since I wanted these assets to be modular, reusable pieces to maximize efficiency, I made actual beam models in Blender that I could snap together in Radiant. And I just UV mapped the texture I made previously with the model I wanted to use with it. And this was the final result. So with that, I think that gives you guys a better understanding of what it takes to fully remaster a map to its highest potential quality in a newer engine in terms of environment art. Remaking all the Black Ops 2 weapons and additional weapons we're adding to the map is definitely going to be the most time consuming part of the map's development process. As these types of assets need to have a high level of detail put into them since they're models that the player is holding up close to them at almost all times, aka a view model. As you all know, I love to make models so I have taken the task to remake all 39 weapons left in the map, as I've already made 3 of them, which are the Python, FAL, and Sliquifier. To delve more into how I approach remaking an old version of a 3D weapon model, I'll go with the Sliquifier since it's the main wonder weapon for Dyrus. To get the proportions and scale of the model correct, I import the old version of the geometry for the weapon into Blender and use it as reference when making new updated geo for the new model of the gun, as well as look at the weapon in game on BO2 to make it as accurate as possible. Once I've finished modeling the high poly mesh of the weapon, I have to then basically model it all over again to make the lower poly so it can actually be used in the game, as using an extremely high poly model in game could be detrimental to the map's performance. So I always use these methods when making assets for the map. Once I'm done making the low poly version of the weapon, I then have to UV map it and assign it to material slots and prep it for texturing in Substance Painter. Once I bring it into Substance Painter, I then bake the normals of the high poly mesh onto the low poly mesh to give it the details it loses when I created the low poly mesh. Then I'm off to texturing and painting the model while looking at my reference images to maintain accuracy. After that, my job is pretty much done, and then I send it off to Dobby so that he can rig it and set up the animations and scripts for it. So that pretty much sums up the development process for remaking weapons for the map. And with that, we've reached the end of the video. I would like to thank everyone who's become a Patreon supporter of mine as it makes a huge difference in my content and is greatly appreciated for my general well-being. Thank you guys so much for tuning into the video and I'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace.